Welcome to Divine Mercy Parish as we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join in singing our gathering hymn, number 302, Gather the People. Welcome to our celebration of, of Eucharist. We gather as God's people in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And with your spirit. We gather the celebration of God's love for us. We also celebrate God's mercy and forgiveness, which guides us to live our faith each day. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. We pray. We bless. 
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all of our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people saying, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him, whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. Then he came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered his synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In the synagogue there was a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? 
I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. And all were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He comes even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. We hear some very interesting words used in today's gospel. Amazed, astonished, he teaches with authority. We might ask ourselves, what, what did Jesus bring to his teaching that people were amazed at? Well, we have to remember, first of all, at this point in Jewish history, um, especially the faith, the faith part, that Mosaic law was key. And so what was most important was obeying the law. That you obey the law, you were a good Jew. If you didn't, you weren't. So what does Jesus do that's so different? Does he, does he disregard the law? Not at all. But Jesus breathes life into the Mosaic law because it's for people. He looks at people as being the most important thing. So his teachings, as we hear throughout the Gospels with parables, his teachings are about life. His teachings are about faith. His teachings are about people who need forgiveness or who experience forgiveness or who need love and experience love. How many times do we see in the Gospels Jesus reaching out to those who are marginalized, those who are on the fringes, those who in many ways have probably felt very much away from their own faith? He brings them life. He brings them forgiveness. And most especially, he brings them love. And that's what I think is so important about Jesus' message and Jesus' way. It's about people. It's about making law serve people's needs. Again, he doesn't dismiss the law. But what's more important is that we respect one another, that we love one another, that we care for one another. So Jesus' way of life and Jesus' message was very different than what the people were hearing from the Pharisees, the scribes, and the chief priests. That is why they are amazed. They're amazed because his teaching is full of humanity. His teaching is full of God's love. His teaching applies to people's lives as they're living it, not just law for the sake of law. His teaching is there to help people become better people, to grow deeper in faith, to understand that, that, that God loves them. And so, rightly so, we hear that, that, that people are amazed and astonished. And his fame does spread because he's teaching in a way that very few people of his time taught, especially if they're scribes or chief priests or Pharisees. He teaches a way of life. He teaches, teaches a way of faith that makes people feel included. And that people's uh, tough times, whether it's sin, whether it's illness, in today's gospel, with his possession, he touches their lives out of love for healing. Again, how often do we see in the gospels Jesus healing people, obviously physically, but also healing people through forgiveness, healing their spirits, their souls, as he heals their bodies? How often do, do we see Jesus really living a life of love for other people? That is why his message was so different. That is why people were astonished and amazed that he taught with authority. He taught with authority because he took the law and let it touch people's lives in a very positive way. He took the law, not dismissing it, but saying, let's live the law in terms of love, in terms of mercy, in terms of compassion. I'm not trying to paint a picture that all the scribes, all the Pharisees, all, all the chief priests were, were, were terrible. They were not terrible people and they were not all obsessed with law. But at this point in Jewish history, the law was the most important thing in faith. And Jesus comes to remind people, 
especially the scribes, the Pharisees and chief priests, that it's about people. It's about faith. It's not just about obeying laws. It's about understanding God's creation, God's love for people, and God's care for people. And I think this is a message we need to hear for ourselves today. It can be easy for us to get caught up in um, what the law says, what the church teaches, and not really look at what it's all about. Jesus brings a new message, a new way of life. He brings a new view of faith, a personal relationship with God. And so that personal relationship with God that Jesus speaks about, he calls God his Father, Abba, Daddy. He invites his listeners to, to recognize God, loves them as the Father. He, he invites us to recognize the same thing for ourselves. That what's most important is relationships with God and with one another. And relationships that are full of life, full of faith, full of hope, our lives are lived in mercy and compassion, forgiveness and love. So Jesus does, do, does bring a new message. He doesn't throw the old message out, but he makes the message relevant for the people of his time and for ours because he's, he says it's about relationships, how we care for one another, how we forgive one another, how we love one another. And Jesus loves us so deeply, he dies on the cross for us. His father loves us so deeply that he sent Jesus to us, to redeem us, and to bring us closer to God. So Jesus' whole reason for coming into our world is about mercy and forgiveness. It's about love. He's sent in love. He treats people with love. He dies because of, the, of his love for us. And his resurrection is about his love for us to bring us the promise of eternal life. So yes, when we hear the, the, the Gospels, maybe we're not as amazed as the people of his time. But we're called to be amazed because in Jesus' teaching, we find life, we find love, we find healing, we find mercy and compassion. All these gospel virtues, all these gospel values that Jesus really challenges us to embrace in our lives. Do we treat people, other people, as Jesus treats us? a very difficult thing to do. It's tough for us to love and forgive at times because the other person may not love or, or, or forgive us. But Jesus challenges us to live as he lived. You know, we're called to be disciples of Christ. And as disciples of Christ, we're called to make his love alive in our world, to make his compassion and mercy alive in our world, to make his forgiveness and care and healing alive in our world. So my friends, that's our calling as disciples. Yes, to be, to be amazed at times by Jesus' teaching, but to incorporate those teachings and his way of life into our way of life. That we become visible signs, visible signs of the love and mercy and forgiveness and healing that Jesus gives to other people. We're called to share that with each other. Let's take some time this week then to reflect on what we'll be hearing in today's gospel, that his message was so amazing and people were astounded by it. Can we be astounded by Jesus' teaching in our, in our own time frame? Yes, we've heard it over and over again in the Gospels, but can we hear the, read, read the Gospels and hear the Gospels with a new, new, new vision, a new way of listening? That we are amazed at what he says to us. And being amazed, we incorporate that into our lives, and we live it. Let us now pause for a few moments. It's a quiet time now to open our hearts and spirits. Um, to this amazing ministry, this amazing gospel of Jesus Christ, who calls us to be his disciples, but who challenges us each and every day that in our discipleship, we make his words, his way of life, his love, his healing, his mercy and compassion, a reality in our time.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was according to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Our faithful God hears the cry of the poor. With confidence, let us present to him our needs. A response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, our bishops and clergy, that they guide us authentic disciples of Jesus and awaken new insights to the renewal of the church in today's world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace on earth, that those in leadership positions bring an end to war, hatred, and injustice for their people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the commitment to life, for the unborn, those nearing death, and for the most vulnerable in our society, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that the Lord will bless and strengthen them to remain united in peace and love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a return to civility and respect for all people, regardless of race, creed, religion, or per political persecution, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing and strength for the sick, for an end to the coronavirus, and for guidance for those administrating the vaccine, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless, and those who are hungry, lonely or unemployed, that the mercy of God will raise them up, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For beloved dead, especially James Harden, that they rest in the joy and peace of heaven, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the names and intentions written in our parish book of prayers, and for the intentions we hold now in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of all parishioners from this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, in you we take refuge. Incline your ear to us and save us. Be our fortress, our stronghold, and our rock of refuge. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This week is Catholic Schools Week, so please keep the students, families, teachers, and staff of Bishop Walsh School in prayer as they spend this week celebrating this important week in their school year. Parents of current Bishop Walsh students, financial aid applications are now being accepted for the 2021-2022 school year. A FACTS grant and aid application must be complete in order for any family to receive any form of financial aid, including parish assistance. A reminder to all returning Bishop Walsh families, it is determined every school year does not carry forward from year to year. If you do not apply, no aid will be given. Our Knights of Columbus will be holding their annual Fit Friday fish dinners during Lent. The dinners begin on Friday, February 19th, at a carryout only. It will cost $10 each. There will be limited numbers of dinners each week. 
And tax statements uh, for your contributions have been sent to all contributors of Divine Mercy Parish. If you do not receive your tax statement in the mail in the next week or so, please call our parish office. Thank you. As our gifts are being prepared, please join in singing number 667, The Lord is My Light. Let us now pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your table, your altar, these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so, it is right that all your creatures serve you. All the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as a joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather our people to yourself, so that for the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be, may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished, by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may, may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, of the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout our world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And my friends, may peace and love of Jesus Christ be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Let's take some time now and offer each other a sign of peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
we now say our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive your body and blood at Mass, please give me the faith to know that you are always within me. Come into my heart today, and never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through the, this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us always, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended here. Let's conforce in peace and joy to always love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week. You too. Thank you. As we go forth to take the gospel to the world, please join in singing number 202, Beautiful Savior. Sir.